This next story from The Guardian is about the conga, the ice shelf, not the dance, Miriam. Yes. So an ice shelf uh, in the Antarctica has melted and gone. Whoops. Um, it, you know, I think, again, this is all about climate change, isn't it? And us ruining the world. Uh, although a Dr. Catherine Coelho Walker, I can't say her middle name, I think says it, it won't it have huge effects, mm. uh, most likely, but it's a sign of what might be coming. What is an ice shelf? I'm thinking of a fridge. I'm like, thinking a of a fridge. shelf in a fridge that fell over. It's not that, that it's it's fell over and cracked. It's actually a big. Apparently, it's the size of Rome. It's apparently a, this this area that collapsed is the size of Rome. That's a big, like a big old ice shelf. That's a big old ice like shelf. Like a chunk of land, really, isn't it? And, yeah. and the issue is that clearly the planet is heating up. Mm. Should we be worried? That's the great debate, isn't it? That is the great debate. Um, I don't claim to be uh, an expert. Uh, my issue is, I just don't know. I think it's always changed. I think the climate's always changed. Mm. I don't think there's ever been... I'm just worried that we're going to spaff trillions on tackling yeah. climate change in the yeah. way that we try to stop coronavirus. Yeah. And yes. in my view, dramatically it's a failed. Bit, it's a bit like trying to control things that are way beyond your control mm. and deceiving and also, yourself. Isn't it also a bit like... And, and having tighter government controls mm. on our life. I think that's really what but it is. But also when only half the world is having those measures as well. Yeah. Whilst well, China well, and China India China and India are to... polluting and... Mm. How's that going to work? Well, it's not. Mm. Um, it's more of a... It's a little bit utopian in my eyes. Mm. Uh and it, and it, Andrew, do you care to offer any balance in this uh, climate-denying well, chat? We're having? I mean, no, but the, po the point you're making... <laughs> oh, that's it, done I mean, it. It's not quite what you're <laughs> How doing. How dare you it. question the orthodoxy, Miriam? Exactly. But aren't you saying more that, you know, we can lower our collective national carbon footprint, etc., but while China and, and these vast states have absolutely no regard for doing that, it is going to be just a drop in the ocean. It's not yes. really going to do much. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, it is quite important, though, with this article, I think, to remember that, you know, as you say, the experts saying this isn't going to have a massive effect. This no. is a, there was a few... Well, that's what they said at the beginning of coronavirus, but no one paid any attention. Well, do you think you raise an interesting point there? Do you think the credibility in what the media has to say about climate change has now been diminished because of what we've seen in the pandemic, where we were told this was the bubonic plague. Well, it's just a complete lack of, of nuance or discussion where you hear multiple scientists talking about climate change. Everything becomes an orthodoxy mm. that is unchallengeable and, and drives government policy. Um, and I don't think that that's right or true. In fact, that, that kind of leads us down quite a dark path. Um, you should be able to question anything, but that science is basically built on questioning, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, and if, if something is an orthodoxy and cannot be challenged, you should be immediately suspicious. Yes. Because if it cannot withstand critique or commentary, yeah, then or it's, being it becomes an ideology. Mm. Do you think we're in ideology territory? Well, it's very with... interesting. There's a kind of like a, a parallel between the COVID thing, where you view everybody as a, as a spreader of a disease, mm. and the climate change thing, where we're all diseased and we're d destroying the world. It's kind of a very misanthropic... Or well, that human beings are parasites. <laughs> that it's basically viewing our fellow man as a parasite well, yeah. and that we're all destroying the world. That's, that's the genuine kind of undertone of it. And then the science is kind of like the fluff they throw on top of it to illustrate this kind of deeper psych psychological point. And I just I don't feel that that's entirely true. To yeah. Be, to be fair, though, they're not saying with this article... No, they're, is, not they're not saying They're not saying this is proof that the world is ending and we caused it. No. They're just pointing out that it's unusual, following a few days of high temperature, that a, 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 an ice shelf the size of Rome collapsed. And so, yeah. you know, maybe we shouldn't draw the connection but, if they're not. I know. read an article about how bad coffee is for the environment, that it takes thousands of litres of water to make coffee, to, to make coffee beans. And you're thinking, well... If I can't have, if I can't drive a car, yeah. I can't fly anywhere, <laughs> I obviously can't eat meat, good luck with that. <laughs> I can't have a cup of coffee in the morning, I can't get drunk at night on what's red wine. Point? You can have what, a what's <laughs> left? You can have a Tesla and you can have a Pims. Oh, no, you can't have a Pims. No, no, probably not. So. Not in the morning. Good luck with that. Well, look, that one will run and run. It's a fascinating conversation. Yeah.